With Mothra vs. Godzilla, another hit for Toho, the studio quickly rushed together another sequel. However, this time Godzilla wouldn't merely be facing off against another popular monster. No, this time Toho set out to create an all new monster, one so big and so powerful it would require not one, not two, but three monsters to take it down. And so the end of 1964 saw the release of Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, the film that truly set the stage for Godzilla's gradual turn into a hero figure. Here. A strange meteorite lands in the forests of Japan, while at the same time a princess from a foreign land survives an assassination attempt, only to turn up proclaiming to be an alien prophesizing the end of the world. As her predictions begin to come true, and Godzilla and Rodan both awaken to wreak havoc, a young reporter and her cop brother work to keep the princess safe from her assassins, while Mothra attempts to unite Godzilla and Rodan against a common enemy, King Ghidorah, the three-headed space monster that hatches from the meteor with the goal of destroying planet Earth. For better and worse, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster is when the Godzilla series started to take a real dramatic turn towards the overtly outlandish and campy. More so than ever before, the monsters are given very explicit personalities, which makes for some amusing interactions. The most infamous being the scene where Mothra attempts to talk Godzilla and Rodan into fighting Ghidorah. While very silly, it does humanize the monsters, making them more than just big lumbering beasts with the sole purpose of destroying cities. The fight that follows is a franchise highlights, and the first of many four-way monster brawls that would become commonplace in the series. While underwhelming in certain aspects, the fight overall is a lot of fun, and sees Godzilla, Mothra, and Rodan combining powers and utilizing creative tactics to win against Ghidorah. However, it's clear that most of the effort went into getting this fight right, because the preceding fight between Godzilla and Rodan is very weak in comparison. It's tame, repetitive, and features some pretty mediocre puppetry. The human characters are okay, but feel like a step down from previous entries. Yuriko Hoshi and Hiroshi Koizumi both return to play similar characters to those they played in Mothra vs. Godzilla, and many other Toho stalwarts appear as supporting characters. Akiko Wakabayashi makes a strong impression as the Princess Selina, but for the majority of the film she acts aloof, and thus isn't given a lot to work with. However, Yosuke Natsuki as Detective Shindo makes for a decent leading man, and his chemistry with Hoshi she, who plays his sister, is actually pretty strong. <laughs> The film's biggest issue, though, is that there is a huge disconnect between the human storyline and the monsters. While most of the previous films were able to connect what the human characters were doing to the monsters in some way, here the two have almost nothing to do with each other, making it kind of hard to get invested in what's going on. As a result, you'll spend a lot of time wishing it would just cut back to the monsters, a feeling only amplified by how entertaining most of the kaiju action actually is. You want more than what the film is capable of giving you, leaving you feeling dis satisfied. This feeling extends to the titular creature itself. Without a doubt, King Ghidorah is a wonderfully realized practical effect, and every moment he's on screen, the film captures your attention. Unfortunately, he's absent most of the film, to the point where he comes off almost as an afterthought. He lacks the narrative impact a kaiju of his caliber ought to have. As a result, Ghidorah's very first appearance is rather weak, but it's a testament to the hard work, craft, and imagination that went into bringing him to life that he went on to become so iconic despite this. Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster is a very flawed but undeniably ambitious entry in the Godzilla franchise, especially given its absurdly short production schedule. The things it does well, mainly Ghidorah and the climactic fight at the end, it does really well, but it's hampered by a story full of half-baked ideas that feels disconnected from the monster action, and some of the special effects aren't quite up to the caliber you come to expect from these movies at this point. It feels like a rush job. However, unlike Godzilla Raids Again, and under Ashiro Honda's guiding hand, Ghidorah the Three-Dead Monster still manages to generate the kind of cheesy thrills that would go on to define the franchise, all while introducing Godzilla's most iconic enemy. It's an important film, and should not be skipped by any Godzilla fan. For more reviews and opinions on all things Godzilla, subscribe and stay tuned to Up From The Depths.